my theme of today which i'm going to share with you is about discipleship christian discipleship discipleship is when the master wins the land of your heart praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord he doesn't win it by authority and power and pomp and glory he wins it by hanging on a cross and you look at this cross you're gone because his humility inside and his patience outside captures the heart of his disciples praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord it was the 11 then after that 120 120 little lands were captured <laughs> after that st peter preaches the first sermon how many 3000 second one you know how much acts chapter 4 2000 more two sermons how many people 5000 300 years what happens the roman empire becomes the holy roman empire didn't he capture the earth praise the lord now praise the lord praise the lord look at this again blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth the entire roman empire the most powerful for movement the world had ever known was overcome by a group of meek and small people murdered killed hounded attacked had they had the master inside and they had learned these two things what are the two things humility inside patience outside carrying jesus discipleship you know we we know that king constantine he became the emperor constantine became the first roman uh, emperor to become christian you know few people ask the question we know that his mother is the one who converted him but few people ask the question who converted the mother i am thinking must be some lowly servant or slave who went to a meeting somebody prayed over her she became christian she gave her life to jesus even if it killed her she went and evangelized the mother of the emperor and the emperor falls to the gentle meek heart of jesus praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord that's how christianity spread that's how it took the world but what happened my brothers and sisters like christianity took rome rome also took christianity and the pomp the pageantry the power attracted and tempted the christian church and that's the truth we have to deal with the truth the wooden cross became gold the most beautiful things became the represent and the symbols of jesus christ and this formula was lost what's the formula humble inside gentle patient outside by the 10th century the church was in crisis it had become worldly the whole thing was becoming lost God raises Saint Francis. What was his formula? You can see the same formula. He goes, he goes to the, his father, drags him to the bishop. So the bishop asks him, "What do you want? Do you want to be a priest?" He says, "No." Then, do you want to preach the gospel? He says, "No." Then, what on earth do you want? He says, "I want to be a beggar for Jesus Christ." Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, he had caught the secret. Humble inside, patient outside, carrying 
Jesus, the living one inside his heart. In his own lifetime, over 10,000 gave their lives. In his own lifetime. Today, the biggest, still, the biggest religious order in the world is the Franciscans. Why? Because there is an attraction to this man. Padre Pio, great men raised by the Franciscan order, St. Anthony. You'll see what is the power inside, it's the power of discipleship. And what is this discipleship? Humble inside and patient outside. Why? Because Jesus is actually living inside of them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? We have a right to dream a dream. A dream of 1.2 billion Catholics. Moved not by the power we have, by the authority we have, by the glory we have. But moved by this internal experience of Jesus Christ. Disciples of the Lord. You know, uh, we have models of people. But Jesus didn't say follow a model. He said, follow me. Jesus didn't say, learn from so and so. Learn from so and so. He said, learn from me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I always tell people who work with me, don't follow me. I'm not a great example. <laughs> That's true. I'm not just saying it. That's the truth. I struggle with my nature. But I'm in love with the Lord. I'm in love with the Lord. I wish I was better. I wish God would make it, make it quicker. But I tell them, let's discover the Jesus who has captured my heart. Find him. Find him. If you find him, you have found the pearl of great price. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, we who serve, we have also have our ego issues. You know, that's the truth. You know, we like when people follow us. You know, oh, I get very great. You know, so and so. You know, everyone wants to hear. Everyone wants to know. Everyone wants to follow. Everyone wants. You know, we say, yes, we are humble outside, but we are proud inside. I am better than most. And the Lord is telling us, Learn to be humble inside and patient outside. Obey the Father's direction, the Lord's will. And God will make you a disciple and through you he will raise other people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How do you get into that? Let me show you. It's beautiful. He came to Simon Peter. You can repeat that. He came to Simon Peter. We say. Who said to him. Lord. Are you going to wash my feet? What was Peter? Humble inside. Or humble outside. Yes. Yeah? Humble outside. He wanted to make a good impression on Jesus. You know, I'm not going to allow you to wash my feet. And look at our own lives. Isn't it the truth? We want to make sure that people know we are good. People know we are okay. People know we are holy. Isn't it? That's more important to us than Jesus actually making us holy inside. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at the next verse. Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing. But later you will understand. Here is the journey of the discipleship. Jesus must directly wash your feet. You can write it down, I'll explain. Jesus must directly wash your 
feet. You need to understand this. My brothers and sisters, let me explain this step by step. What do you mean when we first said we experienced God? It meant we were having a problem. I prayed and God gave us an answer. Isn't it? I had a hundred thousand rupee debt. I don't know how to solve it. I don't know where to go. And God found a way to solve my problem. Praise the Lord we say. And everyone is happy. That's number one way. Then we come to the number two way. What is number two way? We have a sickness. We have some problem. And there is a divine intervention. We experience a healing. We experience an internal rest. We experience Jesus ministering to us. And we say, praise the Lord. We are thankful for that. But we are still at the second stage of that experience. Then we meet people, isn't it? Great and good people who share the gospel with us, who are united with us in our ministry and work, who love us and support us to serve. Isn't it? That's why all of us are serving, isn't it? It's a nun who really brought me to the journey with God. I'm eternally grateful to her. She died at the age of 49. Actually now I realize God sent her like an angel into my life. You know? She really took after me. You know, it didn't allow me to... She somehow saw that the Holy Spirit would touch my life. I'm really grateful. But do you know that there is another stage in discipleship? What is that stage? When the people you love will not or cannot support you anymore. When there is no help or support from your environment. When the world outside sees you not as a holy person but as a liar, a cheat, a rogue sometimes. You have nowhere to turn. You have nowhere to go. Except to the feet of Jesus. If you come to that blessed state. Mark my words. Blessed. When I experienced it a little bit. I didn't think it was a blessing. I thought it was a curse. But it's a blessed state. Why is that? Because in that spot, the Lord Jesus Christ risen from the dead, living in the power of the Holy Spirit inside you, will wash your feet directly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He will wash your feet in the depths of your being. He will take the brokenness, the sinfulness, the the dirt of your life and he'll minister to you. He told Peter, you won't understand what's happening to you. We don't understand why it's so hard to carry the cross. We don't know why we have to go through that rejection, that pain. That's why there are not many disciples, you know. We don't want it. We don't understand it. But the Lord says, that's the way I'll take you. That's the way I'll lead you. And suddenly the door opens. And you are ministered to directly by the master. You know what happens? You are humble inside because you are loved by, the, by your master deep in your spirit. You don't have to show off. You don't have to tell people how good you are. You don't have to win any acknowledgement from the world. Because something richer has been revealed into your heart. And then you are patient with others. Because your spirit 
is a broken spirit broken of self broken of ego by the suffering that the lord led you through praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord it's only those people who can call the others to the high position otherwise you can have the 100 training programs nothing will happen you will have, you will have knowledge that's it nothing will happen and the lord is asking you is asking me i'll tell you honestly if god had given me a choice i'd have escaped so god knew i was weak and he didn't give me a choice he pushed me into it and now only when i look back i realize here is the secret of changing the world jesus said if anyone wants to follow me let him take up his cross what is the cross surrender to the will of the father in the middle of the fire and weak people can do it ordinary people can do it people with no base can do it because it is the master living inside us who will take us to it praise the lord now praise the lord now praise the lord let me show you a beautiful verse you know these two verses are hidden in john 16 it's not in the context of what he is saying earlier it's simply there it's so beautiful i never thought you know till the holy spirit showed me this john 16:32 we look at this this is jesus but the time is coming you can repeat that and has come when you will be scattered each to his own home you will leave me all alone yet i'm not alone for my father is with me shall we give the lord a hand for that and we say thank you lord thank you praise the jesus we worship you look at this this is the cross the wooden one is the only the external manifestation of this internal experience this is the cross you are disciple of jesus you follow him and you enter into loneliness into sadness into suffering into pain because you said yes to his will that's the disciple he has said yes in my heart and jesus is saying when everything is no longer there for you there is one thing which is the real treasure what is the treasure the love of the father the intimacy of jesus and the power of the holy spirit praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord i following what i'm saying can you understand we need disciples not clever speakers <laughs> not great communicators you know i thought if i learn little more i communicate some more you know i'll communicate even more clever it will be better i'm sure it will be better but the lord showed me there's another way and you can't avoid that he gives us the answer in the next verse look at the next verse i have told you these things you can repeat that so that in me you may have peace isn't that beautiful he doesn't say i'll solve your problem and you'll have peace He doesn't say I will give you an answer and you will have peace. He says I'll teach you how to get into me. I'll teach you how to live inside of me and you will have perfect peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is it clear what I'm saying? You know, there was this a uh, religious she was the principal of a big school and she retired she entered into depression and my wife was helping her that's how i know you know they were talking it took 2 years for her 
to come out of thinking that losing your position is the end of life, <laughs> losing your principalship is the end of your meaning, and finding Jesus and peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Recently, she was talking to my wife and she was saying, Now when I sit before the Blessed Sacrament, I find such peace in my heart. Every tree is talking to me about Jesus. Every wind is a touch from the Lord. I didn't know that such a world existed, she said. I didn't know every person's reaction to me is an opportunity to find him deeper. I didn't know such a world existed. She didn't know she was too busy being the principal. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are too busy leading a prayer group. We are too busy doing things. We are too busy trying to be holy. We don't know there is perfect peace in the heart of Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? Actually, we had thriving ministry till a crisis hit us. And at that time, I thought that crisis was uncalled for and unfair. In that crisis, I found that I could not sleep. I found I was internally disturbed. I found I was angry. And worst of all, I found that I had lost God in that crisis. And then only I just realized my busy schedule, my dealing with so many people, running, doing a thousand things, had hidden from me the problem of my own heart. I had lost deep intimacy with God. While I was giving all these talks and leading all these prayers. And the Lord invited me. I allow this crisis not to crush you, but to give you perfect peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And perfect peace comes when you are surrendered totally and say yes to the Lord who is inside of you. And he says, I am gentle. I am kind. I'll teach you. I'll give you perfect peace. And you know what? People want that. They sense it in their depths. They sense you are having him. They sense you have that peace. And they say, can we have that? Can we have him? And people are drawn into the experience. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Otherwise we have to fool them into the experience. We have to drag them, fool them. Come brother, come sister, please come. Help me here. Hear this, hear that. Why? Because they don't sense the treasure that is inside. And here the Lord is inviting you, inviting me. Whom is he calling? The weak and the sinful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And look at the rest of that verse. In this world, you can repeat that. You will have trouble. What do you mean by in this world? If you get into the world, that is, if you think without Jesus, if you look without Jesus, if you look at things only by your natural eye, you will only have trouble. Even the richest man will have trouble. You know, some people think if I have a billion dollars, I won't have trouble. Let me tell you, you will have more trouble than you have no money at all. <laughs> because trouble is in the world. If you are a worldly person, you will be troubled. It's nothing to do with not having problems or having problems. Are you living in this world without Jesus Christ? You'll be troubled. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But look at the answer he gives. But take heart. You can repeat that. Take heart. Say it again. 
I have overcome the world. Look at that. So what's the point? He has overcome the world. So why should we take heart? Why? Because the one who has overcome the world is living inside of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The one who has overcome the world has given you the gift of his Holy Spirit more powerful than creation itself. All the character we need. All the willpower we need. All the strength we need to say yes to the will of God has been given by Jesus living inside of us. All the energy we need to fulfill this mission is given by the Holy Spirit moving inside our lives. So what do we have to do? We have to do something pretty simple. You know what we have to do? Learn to remain inside this. That's all. When you learn to remain inside this, the discipleship will happen through us. And someday, maybe we'll be called, if we are privileged, to die for Jesus. Maybe suffer for him. On that day, he will be there to take us to that place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She will take us from inside. We will carry perfect peace. She will give us the courage to handle it. She will carry us through it. How we are struggling with life by ourselves. Why? Because we are having Jesus separated. In this retreat, I'm inviting you. Thirst for discipleship. Whom is he calling? The weakest. Mary Magdalene is the greatest uh, uh, model of discipleship. Why is that? She's a, we don't really know, but I think tradition tells us, she was a, she was a woman who was, who, whose mor- morality was questionable. She was rejected by society. But yet, because of the risen Christ, the first one to be visited by the Lord himself. The virgin of the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at the, look at the first pope. A failure who could not stand by his master because he didn't have the strength. But because of that, knew that he cannot rely on himself but had to rely on the master and build the church that lasted 2,000 years. Look at the, look at the intellectually proud Paul who was arrogant enough to think he could destroy Christianity, broken, shattered and rebuilt, not on his strength, but in the strength of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is not looking for talented, clever people. He's not looking for people with power and money and capacity to build a kingdom. He has his own. He's looking for disciples who are poor enough to allow him to move and rule their life. Will you be the one? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you.